so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is, oh, great. It doesn't let me, ah, there we go. My name is Sophie. Uh, I'm about 30 year old, even though I look 25, I know. <laughs> but uh, this is me. I have about 10 years experience in digital marketing, including five years doing Facebook ads. Um, I guess I started doing Facebook ads in 2017 when no one was doing Facebook ads and the, the, the platform was completely different. So I have seen the platform change a lot and getting harder and harder every day. But I've also uh, run my own Facebook ads agency for about two to three years. And I've been working on my own brand, which is selling sexy underwear for men for about two years now. And I am myself incubated in session F uh, in the founders program. So if you see me around, you know, I'm the girl with a head shave or well, need a shave here. Pretty easy to spot even with the mask. So don't hesitate to just send me a message or whatever. Um, and just to give you a bit of like background, I probably spend over a million dollars on Facebook ads, like not my money, obviously, but clients money in general. So I have a depth of experience that range from e-commerces, B2Bs, big account where we'd spend a hundred thousand uh, a month. Oh, so then that makes it way more than 1 million for since then. Anyway, um, to like small businesses spending 500, a thousand per month. So I have a whole range of experiences. Um, why is this doing that? Oh, here we go. So here's the agenda. I'm gonna first um, show you how to structure and understand your Facebook business manager, which is like a mystery for a lot of people and quite a bit of a clunky space, but you need to understand it well. Then we'll have some questions. Um, actually in that first uh, step, we have two sets of questions because it's kind of hard to understand. Then we'll see how to build your campaign to reach uh, most people and have the highest impact. Very, very important. And then last, we'll learn how to read your results and optimize your campaign. Cool. Uh, Chiara, if you have anything to add, I'll start. No, she's okay, good. Okay. I'm just writing down in the chat that if you have any question, just write them down in the chat and then we'll get back to it during the question slots. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. So I have added this couple of slides specifically for this presentation because I know all of you are very new business owners. I know all of you Pardon, just uh, recently started your brand and you're probably at the point where you're like, okay, now we need to acquire customers. And I've, I've worked with a lot of business owners like you, like, or just advise them or coach them, etc. And the first thing you need to ask yourself before even continuing and be like, oh my God, I'm going to do Facebook ads, is to ask yourself if your business should do Facebook ads, is whether or not this is like relevant for you. You should do ads if you're in a testing phase. You want to test creatives, you want to test your positionment, you want to test your brand voice, you want to test your target market, you know, which see which people click the most, visit the website the most. That's fine, use Facebook ads. Facebook ads as a growth, uh, growth hack strategy works really, really well. And do ads only, and as I said, only if you have thought about your acquisition strategy well enough to know you can afford these ads. I'm not gonna go into details. This is a whole other presentation in itself, but you need to think about your, like using Facebook ads as an acquisition funnel as a whole, not just, oh, I need to acquire customers. I guess I can do Facebook ads. No, 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 no. Doing Facebook ads, doing Facebook ads is expensive. Doing Facebook ads, it's just a brick in a wall. If you're just trying to present a brick and hope it will transform itself into a wall, that will never work. So don't do ads. If you don't know what your cost of acquisition is, you need to know how much you can spend per client to acquire them. Like, you know, whether you can spend 25 or 50 euros or even 100 or 300 euros, it is important because it will help you then see whether or not your ads are working, if Facebook is working for you, if it is the right acquisition ch channel for you, and if you can afford it more. Of it. Like, there is a hundreds of different channels with Facebook that you can try, but it's just the most common one, I guess. And because the most common one, there's lots of people, lots of noise. It's hard. It's not easy. Don't do Facebook ads if you hope this will solve your acquisition issue. If you have an acquisition issue, if you're still looking for clients, it's hard. Facebook is like, a it can be a growth thing. It can solve your acquisition, but not necessarily. If you're already having 
a hard time acquiring customer customers organically, Facebook ads won't solve this, or it will solve this, but at a very high cost. And if you if you have 10 million in funding from a VC fund, that will work for you, which is the case for a lot of companies. But if you don't and you're bootstrapped, then you're going to have a problem really quickly. Um, I do not recommend to do Facebook ads if this is your only acquisition channel. Why? Because Facebook knows that this is your only acquisition channel and he knows exactly how much traffic is going to your website, etc. A little bit less now with the new rules with iOS or whatever. This is only mobile for now. Facebook knows and will penalize you at some point. Um, if you don't know what else to do, to market your product. Like if you're like, I don't know what to do, so I'll do Facebook ads, wrong road. You do only Facebook ads if you know your market is there, if you know you can afford it, if you know this makes sense in your acquisition strategy over the long term or short term of your business. This is a plan, not a strategy, not just like, you know, like, um, like it's not like, um, I don't know how to say this in English, but usually this is the opposite. But anyway, it's not like a safe plan for you. So now that we made things right, let's go on to doing Facebook ads. Um, so as I said first, um, understanding and structuring your Facebook business manager is probably the most important thing. I cannot recount the amount of business owners that actually have one page there, one business account there, one pixel here, one pixel here. You need this. It's, it's like, you know, it's like working and living in an untidy house. If your house is completely a mess with like, you know, leftover food on your desk and this and that, like I personally cannot work well. It's the same thing with the business manager. It needs to be really well organized. You need to know where things are, what is this working, etc. And this, um, okay, so we started this, fine. My slides are a little bit over the place. Anyway, it's fine. So when we talk about Facebook ads, I also talk about Instagram ads, messenger ads, soon to be WhatsApp ads. You can already do them, but in France, it's not very common. Um, and also like some like partner ads, so in certain games or whatever. So when I talk and when people talk about Facebook ads, they talk about all of these things. Why? Because the business manager helps you to actually manage ads on all of these platforms. Don't worry, you'll be able to choose every time you do a like an ad on Facebook, where you want this ad to be published, whether you want it to be published on stories, where on Instagram, whether you want to publish only on stories on Facebook, only on Facebook, on Instagram, only on Messenger, only on WhatsApp, not a problem. But like people always ask me, it's like, yeah, you do Facebook ads, but you do Instagram ads? Like <laughs> same thing. Like the same platform manages all of these advertising placements. Now we go to the business manager. This is the business manager. I highly, highly encourage you to connect here, um, to go to business.facebook.com, either log in if you already have one, and if you already have one, then this part is not super interesting to you, but still listen, or you can create an account here. Creating an account will, <clears throat> so let, let's step back a little bit. Your business Facebook manager um, is linked to your personal Facebook. There's no other way. Do not create a new, like I see a lot of people and companies or whatever that don't want their employees or, you know, don't want to mix things up that create like a fake or a new Facebook profile and then use that to connect to their business manager. Do not do that because Facebook will know and will consider you as being um, like a fake account and therefore you have a higher chance of your account to be blocked. You know how, like, you know, to connect to your bank and to uh, do a whole bunch of things, you need to authenticate yourself. You need to authenticate and specify that you are the right person. The way, the right person to enter your bank account, the right person to enter whatever it is that you need to connect to. Facebook, to, to, in, in order to make sure that, you know, you're not like a spam or a scam or you're not like any sorts of like, I don't know, uh, like scammer or fake or robot, will actually take you um, your personal Facebook account as a liability to then say that this business, this Facebook business account is a real one and not a scam one or not like a bot one, etc. So it's really important that you connect with your own Facebook. And if you forgot your Facebook credential because you haven't connected for a while, get them back. Honestly, this is the best way you can do. I, I cannot count the amount of Facebook business manager that were blocked because the admin of the business manager is a fake account and Facebook can, knows that and Facebook hates that. 
he needs to say this person is a real person with a real life and unfortunately that comes through your Facebook. It's really annoying, I agree, but this is the way they work. Um, and also for those who are really worried to mix things up, you only use your personal Facebook account to authenticate yourself into the business manager. When you go into the business manager, you're not connected. You, you won't see your timeline. You won't see anything like that, actually. So it's pretty good. So when you like, when you click on like whoops, when you click on like create an account, you, you will actually have to connect to your Facebook account, to your Facebook personal Facebook account, and then give more details about your company, etc. Be as truthful as you can, as you can. Do not try to fake it. Do not try to do fake anything because Facebook will know. And then once it comes to verify your account, you'll have a problem and you'll be blocked. If there's one thing that all Facebook marketers knows about is having your account blocked. Having your account blocked happens very often, all the time for everything and nothing. It's, their algorithm is super, super, super sensitive because I guess so many people so many things to manage and so many scandals like Cambridge Analytica for those who know what that is or whatever around Facebook that they have to be like this. And also because they've been really, really bad at creating like a thing that is, is current and easy. Like Google doesn't have this issue, for example, or not as much, but this is Facebook. Um, understanding the structure of a business manager. So when you're in front of your business manager, think of the business manager as a house. It is a house with a foundation, with a walls that have that like encompasses all of the all of the tools that you will that you will need to use or do Facebook ads and then more. They, they have like a whole bunch of stuff that you may or may not use. But the business manager is like one business manager. You can have access to many business manager. I have access to like I don't know 30, 20 or whatever. You'll see there is like a screenshot, but a business manager per brand. So for example, if Creative Valley one day decided to do Facebook ads, then you'd have like a business manager called Creative Valley. And in this business manager, you would have the Facebook page, the Instagram, the ad account, everything connected. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be connected to do ads. And you know, you don't necessarily need everything, but um, Facebook page, Instagram account, ads account, your pixels, I'll get back to it. Your catalogs, you can connect your catalogs if you're like in e-commerce selling clothing or whatever. Uh, WhatsApp, etc., etc. There's lots of stuff. I think this is like the majority of what you will need to look in. And then the business manager, once you connect all of these or create from it, all of these little tools, then it helps to bind them and connect them between each other. So you will connect your Facebook page with your um, Instagram account. You will connect your ad account with your Facebook page and your Instagram account etc so you can run ads um, and it works better this way for, for those who don't really understand that don't worry there's questions after we'll get after we'll we'll get on top of it so this is how it should look like so this is when i come into my business manager you will see this i mean sometimes you see something different because facebook is testing constantly new new visuals but usually you kind of look like this so as you can see i have one brand amazonia which is here there is this other brand, Adam Markle, one brand, one business manager. This here, this here, this here is a business manager. Um, some have pictures, some have not, but this is how it works. I, I say it again, one business manager, one company, except if you're on agency, this is why here you could say like, you, you can see there's like 21 accounts, etc. But this is how it is. First things first, once you connect, you should find your dashboard. Because once you find your dashboard, you find out what's connected to it, what's not connected to it. And this is how you go. So once, you know, you, could, you should find this little wheel. This little wheel here appears, you know, here as well. And once you click on anything, you will appear, like you will see kind of like this view. And it's like in this little thing, business settings. You always need to go into business settings so you can see who has access. So you can see here, that I gave access to one of my business manager to someone, someone else, and myself. Myself is an admin. Here you can see it. You can remove or add them. Sorry, this screenshot is in French, but you get the idea. You can also have partners. So if you're working with an agency, you give them partners access. I don't know if I have a slide for this. No, which is here. It's the same thing as adding a person, but you add them as a partner, so then they can give access to more people behind, etc. It's a different level. 
and then uh, system uh, systems uh, users. So for example, if you have a developer, um, I don't think this is your case, but if you have a developer that works with a Facebook API to create something very special, it have like a system user here. Then you can see all the page. You can see I have a lot of pages connected, but you should have only one or, one or two, you know, because one business manager, one brand. Um, I have a lot here because this is the business manager of my previous agency. And obviously I still have access to a lot of things because clients still want me to look in sometimes or whatever, but one business manager, one page. As you can see, we also have like a Compublicitor or ads account in English. You can have many ads account here. An ad account is the place where you will be able to do your, um, your, your ads, your publicities. We'll get to that. I'll show you what it looks like a little bit later. You can have a few. If you're spending a lot of money, um, if you are, you know, having different channels, if you're having, you know, um, different audiences, but not really, I think it should be still the same. But if you're doing complex stuff, you can have like ad account one, two, three, four, five. For example, um, Creative Valley one, two, three, ad account, Creative Valley ad account one, two, three, four, five. Um, for you, if you only spend like one to 10K a month, one ad account is good. You can create another one just as a backup, just in case it gets it gets like blocked, but one or two should be more than enough. Super important. Um, and then the pixels. Um, I wonder, and you can put that in the chat, who knows what a pixel is? Super, super important once again. Why I don't have access to the chat? Where is it? Yeah, exactly. So Anwar was like, so the tracking system used on web tracking, exactly. So the pixel is a little piece of code that people insert on their website so that Facebook can know exactly uh, what they do on once they leave Facebook. So for example, once again, if Creative Valley was doing Facebook ads, the ads is on Facebook, the person clicks arrived on Creative Valley's website, and then the pixel helps track everything that this person is doing on the website. That person has clicked here, the person has clicked here, that person has converted into a customer, or in case of, because there is lots of e-commerces and brands in here, um, that person has added to cart, that person has um, viewed a certain product, etc. It's really, really important that you know what the pixel is doing, how and why, because this is the most important element into running an ad. If you don't have a pixel, you're running blind. It's pretty much like driving blind at night without your headlights. You don't know where you're doing. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what's happening around you. Having a pixel puts like flashlights, lights everywhere, you know, like it's almost daylight. You can't actually, you know, uh, advance, like drive safely. Um, yeah, the question, we have a little asterisk though, and I'll get to it. But before, do you have any questions on the business manager in general? I'll just wait for a few minutes to see if there are questions. Question. Um, about what, what you think is an acceptable cost of acquisition? Um, an acceptable cost of acquisition is an accept acceptable cost for your business that makes sense. So I'll, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna take my own brand to give you an idea. My own brand is selling sexy underwear for men. It's about, and this is my own strategy. It really depends on your strategy, the money that you have, that you're willing to spend, the velocity, your, your ta trésorerie, so your, um, your cash flow, et cetera. I'm selling my underwear 50, 50 bucks, uh, uh, and uh, like a piece of underwear. And I know that I have, let's say, you know, this is hypothetical, but let's say I have 50 to make it easy for the math. Let's say I have, I make a 50% profit on it, all cost included. So the cost of running the business and the cost of production, let's just say. And I know for a fact that about 20% of my customers come back to buy a second product within the, the year of them purchasing their first one, which means that my long-term value, I should do a slide about this, but anyway, my long-term value, so the value, of my, the value of a customer, so the amount of money he will spend on his lifetime. And for me, because I'm a young company with a limited cash flow, my lifetime value is only over a year. Then over a year, that person 
will spend on average 80 euros. Okay, let's just say. So your cost of acquisition, my cost of acquisition can be up to a certain point. I cannot spend 80 euros for the acquisition because otherwise I'm not making any money per client. So if the consumer is coming, uh, you know, 20, back 20% of the time, spends on average 80 euros over the, the, the course of the year, um, and my costs are about 50%, then of those 80 euros, I know that 40 euros will go into my pocket directly after costs. So running costs, and this is without tax. So there's also the tax, but it's different. Um, so running costs and production costs. Of those 40, so if, you know, so this is this is what it is. So the most you can spend on a customer here is 40 euros. I hope this makes sense. So this is something you need to calculate based on your business and based on your strategy and the cash flow that you have. So for example, like for let's just say for Quanto or for Shine, you know, like the, the, the bank, the neo bank for the entrepreneurs, etc. They have a lot of cash flow. They, they have like a, an extremely high long-term value and, and, um, and they have like a, a return rate or a turn rate that is very low. So I'm guessing that they're ready to spend for the acquisition, like maybe a thousand euro per customer. As simple as that, because they have the cash flow, so they can see the long-term value not only on a year, but maybe on like five, 10, 15 years. Like Nike can understand his long-term value as like maybe 10 years, because it knows that you will come back and do a whole bunch of things differently. So this is how you think about it. But if you have more questions about this, there's lots of like tools online, etc., where you can help calculate this, but very important. Um, Cool. I guess there's no more questions. I'll keep going. I have, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Earlier we said that we can uh, run Facebook ads in order to test uh, mm -hmm. our clientele, etc., etc. Yeah. So, uh, the, um, uh, my question. So, if I don't, if I don't have these estimates for now, so. Um, mm -hmm. Is it always uh, interesting to run Facebook ads? And uh, and what about running little campaigns? You know, so so to test in in some kind of incognito mode. You know, so don't spend a lot of money. Just spend a little so in order to test uh, whether uh, so uh, to test our personas to test. Uh, yeah. To test our target market, etc. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I highly encourage you to do this as well because it's a great way of doing it. You can just spend like you know five euros. You give yourself a bit of like fifty or hundred euros just to test like you know different visuals, different kind of brands, and different audiences. So you know that this kind of audience seems, seems to be at least the most interested in your product. So use Facebook ads to market, like to test your market. That that's fine. But what I'm saying is like. Don't just say, okay, no, I have a whole bunch of stock, you know, like pullovers and underwear and whatever uh, to, to sell. Um, and now I'm going to do Facebook ads and sell them because that's won't work. I'm going to give you, tell you a thing, guys and women. I'm, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm a Facebook ad specialist. This is the thing that I do best as a skill and I do not do Facebook ads for my business. I do a little bit like for Christmas and for uh, Valentine's Day. But on a day-to-day -day basis, Facebook and Instagram ads is not my main channel of acquisition because it doesn't make sense for my business right now. As simple as that. Okay. But cool. I did use it to test a whole bunch of stuff. Cool. Thanks. Um, make sure you have installed your pixel. Uh, this is how you test it. You go into your data sources. Inside your data sources, you will have your pixel here. Here is the data so you can check. Uh, check, you know, up. Oh, that the page view, the view content, et cetera, is working. You can do diagnosis. So, um, um, you know, you'll be able to test each of the events. I'm not gonna go into it. Facebook, you know, leads you very easily towards this, but always test uh, your pixel before starting a campaign to make sure it's well installed on your website, et cetera, right, so you don't have a problem. This is what the pixel look like, and this is how you can trouble troubleshoot uh, some issues. There is this little, um, um, little thing that you can install on your browser called the Facebook Pixel Helper. So a little Chrome extension. 
I don't know, there's probably other extension for other browser, but this is the best one that I know. It will pretty much tell you what has the pixel tracked so far. So you, you can see that I went and looked for uh, the Stan Smith uh, shoes and that, um, you know, like I view the page and then I view the content and then I added to cart because I added to cart one pair of shoe, etc. And like it also tracked like other little things here. So you can check whether your pixel is tracking. And if there is a problem or like an issue, like you will have uh, this little icon here um, that, that will tell you there's a problem. It doesn't mean there is a problem. Sometimes it just means that, you know, there's that and that, but just check it. It will help you actually troubleshoot. And the thing is like, it also tells you the pixel ID because every pixel has an ID oh, yeah, here. It's written, but here we go. Um, all of this, what I'm telling you here, and I think, yeah. What I'm telling you here, you need to be really, really careful with it because everything is changing right now. And I don't know what the future is looking like exactly. Um, some of you may have, may have heard that now Apple is actually blocking Facebook to track its users and that Google is gonna start probably doing the same and that Chrome will follow, everyone will follow because suddenly all the big GAFAM realized that um, user privacy is becoming more and more important. So until now, this works. I would highly encourage you to test whether or not you have a lot of your users that go to your website from an iPhone, especially like a recent and the dated iPhone to do purchases and to do anything on your website. If that's the case, then know that um, uh, your data will be less accurate and your data is calculated completely differently than it is now. Right now, what works is like, like someone does an action on the website, Facebook records it and, it and sends the information back to your business manager so you can have a look at this information. Right now for, um, for Apple users, so iPhone, iPhone users that have an app, that have the app on their, on their phones, uh, it works completely differently. I'm not gonna go into the details because I don't understand it exactly myself, how it works yet, it's a bit opaque. But, um, but this is about to change. So I know it works, but I don't know for how long and I don't know what's going to happen with it. Facebook will probably find a new parade to like work it out, but you'll have to see. And another thing here that changes it, it doesn't appear here because the screenshot is like a couple of months old. Um, you have no to ver you now have to verify your domain with Facebook so that you can, you can tell exactly um, uh, you know, that this traffic is coming from this website with the pixel, etc. So it's like verifying your domain. It's like just adding a C name to your domain. It's pretty easy. If you don't know how to do it, I'm sure someone who's a developer should be able to help you or I can help you with this scenario. One last thing on the business manager before we finally leave the business manager forever and not talk about it anymore. Uh, verify and secure your account. I cannot recount the amount of um, clients, etc. They did not do this that got their Facebook uh, account, personal Facebook account hacked, therefore had access to the business manager, used it to launch ads and lost 20 grand in a day before Facebook realized it and shut down the account. Activate the two-factor authorization, um, the two-factor verification or the two-step authentication on Facebook and on your business manager and verify it. So, you know, like if you're verified, you have a little green button here that says verified. This one is not verified, you know my address now, whatever. Um, but um, but like um, the, the one for my brands and my clients are always, always, always verified. Well, this one is now, but anyway. So don't forget to do that, super, super important. Okay, let's get into the business manager, the ad account, woohoo, let's make ads. Ads, this is where the magic happens, happens, there's an H. First of all, there's a campaigns where you set up the object objective of your campaign. I'll get to that. Second of all, there are the ad sets where you test your urgencies and your placements. And the third, there are the ads. So where you test your visual and your copy. And you can see it when you open like the, the ad account. So we are in the, in the ad account here. Um, you have, so like the, the tab for campaigns, a tab for ad sets and the tab for ads. So ju just so you're clear, when you create a campaign, each campaign can have multiple ad sets, so multiple audiences and placement, 
and those ad sets are connected to one or multiple ads. So it's not like, you know, it just helps you to navigate through a different point of view, but one campaign can contain one or multiple audiences and placements that themselves can contain multiple or just one visual and copy, so one ad, okay? So this is like, th think about it as like a, a tree. So you got the trunk, which is the campaign where you set the objective, then you've got the audiences, and then you've got all the ads that you're testing. Uh, campaign's objective. So what I mean by objective is like, oh, this isn't, there's, <laughs> there's one sentence in French here. Oh my God, this is how my brain works. You know, there's like a speaking English has one in, sentence in French. Anyway, I'll translate that for you guys. So the campaign objectives, um, there are three main ones, what we call awareness, consideration, and conversion. So for those who are familiar to like funnel conversion, this is exactly like it, this is the same thing. So this is where you can tell Facebook that you want your, you want your campaign and the people that you're targeting with your ads and your publicities to either have, have be seen by the most people possible, rich, have people remembering your brand. This is how powerful the pixel is, uh, the, the algorithm is, to know your brand really well, or you want people to click and go onto your website, traffic, or you want people to comment, engage, view, like, save your ad, engagement. You want app installations, you want video views, you want lead generation, so you can do a lead generation directly on Facebook with like little messenger pop-up and the insert the email address or messages. And then on conversion, so you can say, I want people to purchase. Absolutely, so you know, I want people to purchase and buy something. I want people to look at uh, my catalog and I want people to come to my store, so my physical store, but this is like completely different. And you're like, great, this is awesome. I can tell Facebook to buy my stuff just straight away. Yes, but I, I talked about this pixel, right, just earlier. And now I started talking about the algorithm. Everyone heard about the algorithm of Facebook. This is big beast and so you follow a bit the news, you know, algorithm, 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 whatever. The algorithm is the amount of information that Facebook had has about you. And, you know, and, and then the algorithm is like the, how do you call that? Uh, the formulas, so the many, many formulas that predict your, behavior, I'd say, this is like a very simplistic way of putting it, on his social media. So it is true that the algorithm knows when a certain person is more likely to click, visit a website, is more likely to purchase, is more likely to want to engage, or is more likely to want to look at the brand and remember it. it, it that's the algorithm. But then you got a pixel. So the algorithm is not as smart that it can know exactly for your campaign objectives, for your audience, and for your ads that that person wants to buy. And this is why we've got a pixel, not only to send the information, but also because this pixel will be, will be attached to, um, to, your, um, to your business and to your brand, and will start to know and learn about it. This is why it's really, really important to have one business manager for one brand, one pixel for one brand. Because if you're using this one pixel to sell supplements or to sell organic, um, uh, organic uh, sportswear, then this is two completely different products and you don't want one pixel on those two websites because the audience is completely different. The way of interacting with your website is completely different, etc. So that means that you're left with a pixel that you need to learn, that you need to teach. This pixel is virgin. It needs to be taught what to do. So he's got his parents, the algorithm, and they will help each other a lot, but you still need to, to do what we call warm up your pixel. So on an unwarmed pixel, if you go directly for conversion, you probably will have really, really bad um, results. Why? Because your pixel doesn't know who is like, likely to buy. Because even if you say, I want people that live in Paris and are likely to be entrepreneurs and that like organic foods, um, he won't, you know, and this is probably like, I don't know, 1 million people. This is still a lot of people. There's only so much money you have. And there's only so much space. The algorithm will, uh, will give you and your pixel to show your ads. Therefore, it will be less effective. So this is why you probably need to start with a traffic 
or engagement campaign. So you can teach your pixel who you are, what is your brand about, what type of people interact with it, etc. So you need like a warmer phase. Um, I usually say you need about 10,000 events. So remember the events here. 10,000 events, page view, view content all together until your pixel is more or less warm, more or less. But you know, that could be wrong. You know, like and this is the thing with Facebook. If you really want to try conversion, oh yeah, oh yeah, sorry. And if you want to warm up a pixel, maybe at first don't go for purchase, but you can optimize for um, add to cart. So ajouter au panier. Or you can optimize for view content. So view content like here, you know, view content. So I just saw the page, I just saw the product. I didn't add to cart or anything, but I view the content. So that's one of the things. Um, and you will learn how your pixel works. You will learn how your ad account works, etc. Each ad account, each pixel, each business is different. And the pixel has been trained differently and has different um, information to it. So it's important that you, you know, do your, um, your due diligence and, and understand where you're at, where your pixel is at and what you can do. And also it's very, very important to install your pixel as soon as you've got a website, because then it can get data. Because even if, because like the pixel doesn't only track the traffic coming from Facebook, but it tracks any traffic. So the traffic from Google, the traffic from your SEO, so like search, the traffic from anything. So any purchase, any purchase, any add to cart, any engagement on your website, the pixel will record. And then once you're ready to launch Facebook ads, you already have this data in. So it's already warmed up because whether or not you do Facebook ads, uh, these events will be reported by Facebook. Okay. Cool. Um, I know we're spending a lot of time on this. It's actually really important that you understand this. This is probably the first step. Um, if you have any questions, the, I, there is a question, I can see it. So someone say, start your engine, ask in case we want news, a newsletter subscription as a campaign target and our newsletter subscription is based on a pop-up, how can we manage? Um, I'm imagining that the pop-up is on your website. Well, in this case, you can do a conversion as well. So you have two options. If your pixel is warmed up, you will probably go for a conversion. And then you create like what we call a custom conversion, where you say lead generation or newsletter subscription. Um, you just do it with an URL. The most important thing is like, you need to be able to tell Facebook that the person actually has converted into a someone subscri subscribing to your newsletter. Um, the best way is to have like a thank you page um, after someone uh, signed up or like to your newsletter. Uh, so you can totally manage this and a lot of people do this very easily or you can do directly lead generation. Um, but I do not actually recommend using lead generation because um, those leads are usually much less of a quality than, than if you send people to your website and then whether or not they decide to give you your email address. Because the lead generation thing here, um, you know, people don't have interaction with your brand. So you're more likely that they will forget about even giving their emails to you. And also uh, because Facebook auto-populates um, the lead generation pop-up with the email address that they have. So for example, I don't know, I opened a, my Facebook account when I was, I don't know, like, I don't know, it was back in 2008, 2009. I was using like really stupid, like Hotmail, whatever gmail so it was not like sophie.gambet at gmail.com which was something like you know celeste dans les étoiles no 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 so it has a case for a lot of people of our age actually so when it's sort of populated it goes to that email address an email address that probably a lot of people don't even check regularly you will go into the promotional thing people won't even see it so it can be good it can be good for some business it works really well for younger people for example or very age people, but for people of our age, people that grew up with Facebook, not so much. So careful, careful when you do that. Okay, we need to advance. How to create an audience? No worries, start your engine. You're welcome. Uh, how to create an audience? There's three possibilities on Facebook. <clears throat> to create an audience is easy. Always this little menu here and then go on audiences. You'll find it. And this is what you are um, given with. So. You have custom audiences, lookalike audiences, and saved audiences. There's a special ad audiences. I won't talk about it here, but just quickly, this is if you want to do political ads, 
housing and employment ads. So you're kind of like restricted to what you can do with this specific ads. Um, won't go into it today, it's too complex, but whatever. Custom audience, lookalikes, and personal audience are the three audience that you can do, and they are very different. One, what we call the custom audience, are the audiences that are um, created from the data that your website and pixel is sending to your business manager, or that you are feeding them. So web traffic and conversion. So remember, it's not fast enough, is it? So you can create here, audiences based on people that view the page, audiences based on people that view your content, audiences based on people that added to cart, et cetera, the purchases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Or on people that interact with your Instagram account. So people that recently commented, people that liked your photos, people that view your stories, et cetera. You can do that, like create like engagement campaigns. Um, you can also feed them. So if you weren't doing Facebook ads before, but for example, you did like a crowdfunding campaign, you have a lot of emails, you can actually give that list of emails to Facebook and Facebook will, match, will then match these emails with their, like the, the person on Facebook. And so you can use it to retarget. So I don't know if you did a pre-launch or whatever, this is very, very uh, useful. And also you can do um, based on video views. So people that view your videos, whether it is organic or not on Facebook, um, you know, 15%, uh, 50, 75% of video views, whatever. Very similar. If you're regular with like YouTube content creation, you will know this. Uh, Lookalikes. So let's just say that you have a lot of data on your website or you have like a big email list uh, of people that have purchased or whatever. Uh, you can find similar people to a credit mine audience. So once again, if you had done a crowdfunding and uh, this crowdfunding, you're left with like a thousand email addresses, then you can insert them into Facebook and ask Facebook to find people similar to the one who purchased your product, giving you a new audience. Very, very powerful if used well. Be careful of the quality of your data. data. Do not go and buy email addresses and then insert it into Facebook to create a lookalike. That won't work. Just as simple as that. Well, very likely not to work. Unless you know that the data, the data is of quality, it's not going to work. If you give me like a bunch of email addresses that 50% of it is like your friends and family that sign them because they like you and because they want to support you, that won't work. These aren't your customers. So you only get a good lookalike audience if you give them good quality data. Finally, a personalized audience that is based on interest, demographics, and behavior. So, you know, people that go to church every Sunday, um, people that like to buy organic food or go to Naturalia, for example, stuff like that, or that are like, you know, 30 of age and are interested in entrepreneurship and maybe they hang out a lot around Session F. You can do that. All sorts of stuff. Questions, because <laughs> that was a lot to take in. Questions, questions, questions. Going once, going twice. Cool, I keep going. How to build your campaigns and ads to reach the highest impact. Um, very, very important. And you know, like you can be the best at managing your Facebook ads, but if you don't know who your audience is, if you don't know what type of like visuals they will respond to, your ads will never work. As simple as that. I, I, I often said, actually, my work is to do audience research and create creatives at work rather than actually managing ads because it's getting easier and easier to manage ads these days. Like the algorithm is so powerful that you get you get what you want. Sorry, just one second. There we go. Um, so the first question to ask yourself. Uh, okay, there's a question I didn't see. So Sartre and Giant ask, for the lookalikes, prefer 1% of extent. Really, really, really depends on your product, the size of your audience, the, the quality of the data that you're giving it, and the number of people that Facebook is giving you. Nowadays, nowadays, I go straight for 3% because um, the Facebook algorithm is like 
really good with that and we need to give it a little bit more space because of the iOS changing changes. A year ago, I would swear by 1%. So test, 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 and test and see which one works the best. Like th there's no one straight answer. Okay, who and why is your, like, who is your audience and why they're buying? Super, duper, duper important. So research your audience. This is like 50% of the work, I swear to God, if you know your audience well. And when I say know your audience, call your customers. If you don't have customers, call your personas, people that could be your customers, call them. Record the words that they are using. Um, see the type of images they're used to see on social media, you know? If, for example, you want to launch um, um, or like um, a concurrent of Nike, like see all the ads that they're doing and see if you can improve them, do better or do something so different that people will be like, whoa, what the hell, you know? Trying to like understand your positioning, your positioning, your brand voice, everything. This should be like on point when you do Facebook ads or, or you researched it before. With Facebook ads, but right now we're talking about selling on Facebook ads. So research your audience. Who are they? Are they listening to podcasts and magazines? Who, which influencers are they looking for? What's their age? What's their location? How much they're earning? How and why they use your product? That will help you not only to create your audience into Facebook, but it will also help you to create the perfect visuals and the perfect copy that will make them click or convert. Super, super, super important. Then um, when you're serving them an ad, where are you at in your process? Do you want them to buy? Do you want them to like click uh, on your site and visit it? Or you want them to give them brand awareness? The problem with Facebook is that the algorithm is so, 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 so um, smart, then it's like, it gives you exactly what you want. And this is booking your problem. Because like a few years ago, you could say, oh, I want as much traffic as I want on my website. And then you could be sure that this first part of this traffic could be potentially like converting audience that would buy your product. It's less and less the case right now, which is interesting because Facebook is so good at determining when people is good or wants to click, then when you put a traffic objective, you have, you're much less likely to see people convert because people are really, truly just here to click browse leave. You know, they're there, for example, this is when they're bored, I'm guessing, I don't know, like they're in the subway, and they're trying to pass time. This is not when they buy you. I don't, know. I don't buy when I'm in a subway or in a metro or whatever. Like I just don't, it's weird. I do it at home, you know, when I'm in like a purchase or buying. So careful. And also think about your user experience. Facebook will penalize you for this if you don't think about this thing. Is your site mobile friendly? Is your site fast? Uh, you know, it will load really fast. If you have, you know, if it's more than three seconds, you lost it. Like people have clicked and Facebook, you're like, well, I give, you, I give you clicks, no problem. And you'll lose everything. Um, Facebook will penalize you if your user experience is bad, if your site doesn't load fast, if um, people don't stay more than three seconds on your website as well, because this is bad experience for them. Remember that the primary objective of Facebook is to keep people on their platforms. Therefore, anything that gives a bad experience to the user is penalized in Facebook. And I should add here, that when you do an ad on Facebook, you're actually entering uh, a bid. It's like going to the auction and be like, I'm putting 50 euros on this audience. Because you can imagine how many like business owners like you are trying to do ads. I'm guessing there's probably, I don't know, 10 or 20 organic leggings trying to sell on, on, on Facebook here. And it's not to say that your business is not right. I think you're right and think there's space for everyone. But what I'm saying is that you're all of you are preying on the same audience. So how does Facebook to know? Like, it's not like Facebook takes your money and puts your ads up. No, 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 no. Facebook takes your money, makes a bit of a math and be like, oh, this guy has a better user experience and has a better audience and with better like visuals and stuff. We're going to put him first. And if you have a bad user experience, like website is slow, doesn't load, it's really hard to use, your visuals are crap, and your audience is like doesn't respond to the, this type of ads, then Facebook will put you last because it wants people to stay on the platform as much as possible. So you need to be really careful. This is really, really important. 50% of the work. I'm not even kidding. A few tips on creating an audience. Um, I should have put it a little bit earlier, I guess. Um, don't forget to exclude people. So if you're looking for people that are celibate, um, you know, like in their 20s or whatever, exclude people that are in a relationship just so you know you don't lose money or whatever 
Um, and as I said, the more about, the, the more you know about your audience, the more you can put. So type of podcast, type of newsletter, type of website. If they read Le Monde or they read Le Figaro, if they read Slate or they read Atlantico, I don't know. All of these things, you need to know this. You actually need to know this so you can like insert it really well. And also check your audience overlap. Um, you know, especially if you're targeting people that are living in Paris that are 30 years old and buy organic stuff. If you if you say, huh, I wonder if uh, you know if I change just one of the interests or one of the demographics, this will change. Probably, but then if your audience is like 90% the same, then you're doubling yourself. You're spending twice the same amount of money. So be careful. Check the audience overlap in your audience, like the three little dots, short audience overlap, easy. Few tips when you create your audience. Um, think geolocalization. People are like all of friends. Maybe they're more like in Paris or Lyon. We don't know. There's that. Uh, exclusions, I said about it. Check your audience overlap. We talked about it. Um, keep your audience large at first, more or less large. The algorithm knows better than you. Um, always test a few different audiences, like Medley, or custom, or saved, etc. So you give like the algorithm a whole bunch of like different um, different avenues to test. Because what's happening is like when Facebook, when you give Facebook an audience, it doesn't not go out and just randomly choose people. Within the audience that you create, Facebook create what they call pockets pockets of audiences and you will start this one and then another one and then another one. So if you have like different audiences you're testing is better. And if they have a little bit of an overlap, no more than 50%, then it's fine. You can exclude them anyway when you create your audiences, you know? If you're like, when you create your ad, you say, I want audience A, but excluding audience B, you can totally do that. Um, copy, you know your audience, you know who they are, you could find them on Facebook, everything is fine. And now you're like, okay, I need to write the, the, the content, the written content, and copy is everything. Why it is everything? Because you have literally one or two seconds to, um, to persuade someone to even have a look at your ad on Facebook, scrolling. All of us were scrolling constantly, scroll, 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 or seeing stories, you know, and you know how your attention span, your attention span is so small. So scroll, scroll. Uh, copy is everything. Um, if you know you can't look client well, you will know what they need. You will know what words they are using. You will know um, how they want to be talked to. You will know what are like the points that really, really like gets them to read. Um, Ada model, one of my favorite models to read to write uh, Facebook ads. There are many, many different like many different like models, like copywriting models. This one is one of the best for Facebook, I find. But then again, test test different things really, really good ad copy. Um, you know, you can, you, like here you can see more, but usually you can only see like those two more, two for, the two first sentences. So this is uh, the most important. And this is a really, this is a really interesting ad because it talks to my guts. I, I don't have kids, but I can imagine that if I have kids and you're know, screaming in my house every day, this will take my guts. You know, I would see my house used to be ugly. There were family white a German every day. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is me. And I'm like, okay, maybe this woman has something to tell to me. This is biological. I need to fix this problem. I'm a mom or I'm a dad. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Um, think about this, you know, take them to their guts. Talk to them exactly to their needs. Really, really important. Make a strong title, you know? And then you're like, offer a little bit of a solution here. You know, they decide, okay, strong word, beginning of a solution. You're like, okay, maybe there's something for me. So why use your words or calm down as gaslight to the fire and like, oh my God, I've actually been doing things wrong. This is my fault. Now I definitely need to click. You know, like it's very, it's like, it's like manipulation. You need to manipulate your people to think that they need to click. As simple as that, like it is. Um, and you can add a caption, but it works only on Facebook um, and on desktop. So I'll see what happens. Um, to write Facebook ads, people are like, oh my God, the shorter the better, people don't have a long attention span, no, 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 wrong. If the first two sentences are strong enough, if the first two sentences are, um, you know, like, 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 like the one, like the one just above, like people will want to read more. Don't forget that your ads is actually here to serve and to help 
putting your potential customers into the frame of mind that they might need to buy your product. Don't hesitate to test long copy against short copy. Super, super important because this is how you invite someone into your world. This is your only occasion. You know, and sometimes short copy works better. Totally. But test both. And if you're running out of ideas, you know, there is the, what we call the Facebook ads library. Type Facebook ads library on Google, you'll find it straight away and you can literally spy on everyone that is doing ads. Um, during When I was doing this presentation during the elections uh, with Trump or whatever, I was like, go and check the ads that Trump was doing. Actually, you can still see them, I think. Very, very, very interesting. And you can see anything, all of the concurrent. You can check whether they're doing ads or not. Super, super interesting. A few rules. Uh, no sexual reference of content. Uh, you know, there is this brand, Station F, that they are in my guild. Um, they sell uh, ties, uh, tights, you know, the collants for women. And uh, they were banned by Facebook. And I was like, of course, he's, you know, this, this picture is like, it showed like women just wearing like the collants, a little bit transparent and you can see their ass and Facebook hates that. And so they block them. So be careful. Like, for example, if you have like a legging company, if you're selling clothing, no sexual reference of content, the least nudity possible. Uh, no false claim, no MLM. No bit.ly or URL shorteners. This is a new one. They always hated it, but recently they block account because of it. I've noticed that, so careful. Uh, little to no personal attribution. So reduce the use of you, 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 you. They hate that. Uh, no political ads. You're not allowed to. If everything sounds remotely political, and I'm sure there is a lot of like um, organic brands here trying to do something right. But for example, do not put in your ads um, the environment is a problem and everyone should take care of it. This is the solution that we propose. Your ad will get banned straight away because it is a political statement. So careful. Um, avoid using celebs names, you know. Facebook will block you as well. Um, and if you're running ads about housing, employment, social issues, politics, you'll need specific, specific approval from Facebook. Won't go into this today, but if you need help, I'm here. But pretty much you'll need to verify who you are and a whole bunch of stuff. So that's it. Questions before I go on to the how to build strong visuals? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna wait a bit. I'm gonna drink some water. I have only half an hour left. It's gonna be interesting, but. Do, do not hesitate to speak up if you have a question. Mm. All good, thank you, Elliot. Perfect. Anyway, there's more like question time, so. You'll talk about the retargeting specifics. Uh, am I talking about retargeting? Maybe not in this presentation. I think here it's just about like getting your ads right. But if you want to talk about retargeting specific, this is, I think it's already a little bit more advanced. But retargeting, of course, you should retarget like, you know, with your audience. Here you can, oh, you can create retargeting audiences. As simple as that, like people that visited your website 30 days ago, we target them with like a different, it's the same thing as doing an ad, except that you're targeting people that went to your website. But I won't talk much about this here. Okay, strong visuals. Don't hesitate to use high contrast. Obviously don't use that, but you can see that your eyes is attracted straight away to the man with the high contrast here. Why? Because this is a bi biologic thing. It's not because this guy is like, I don't know, for me, it doesn't look hot, but some people may be like, oh my God, muscles. Anyway, um, think about it uh, from a biological point of view. You, you are like, you know, primitive humans or whatever, homo erectus, something like that. You're in a savanna and your only means to survive is to prevent things to happen to you. And to prevent things to happen to you is to always be on alert. To always be on alert, you know, um, and, so you're always on alert, you know, you look, you look, you walk, you know, there's always part of your brain that is checking your surroundings. And which means that our um, brain actually developed like what we call like a processing, you know. And if you see like, I don't know, you know, if you're, if you're seeing images that you're used to see, then your brain will process them really quickly, like something that's stern or whatever, and be like, oh, that's fine, you know, no threats here. But if you have an image that is unusual, that it's something that you, your eyes are not used to all the time and that kind of process and could resemble as a threat in the savanna, like this is not a threat, but you're like, hold on a minute, this guy has like weird colors. You need to like look at it twice. 
it, to process it because you don't understand it just from one, like just from one eye or whatever. So this is why strong colors, you know, like here there is, it's weird, you know, I'm like, what, this shoes, Nike, you need to look at it twice. Here there's lots of different colors and things that seem to be moving. I need to process it a bit. So this is why. Don't hesitate um, to have a look. Like unexpected, unexpected shapes as well. Like here, you know, like this thing seems to be coming out. I feel like there's something coming up to me. So check it. Like I use, what I used to do is like to create, like if I have like a lot of my clients got, got st static images because they don't have the budget to actually create like long videos and like crazy stuff and it takes time and energy and knowledge. So we just take like images like this and add like a little GIF in it. So if you use Canva and you put like a little, little thing that is moving on the side or whatever, like I used to put um, a star that's shining that creates a video of like five seconds. And you put it in here and that attracts the eye. The image is steady, but there's something moving in it. So I need to like, oh my God, what's going on? Just like draw attention. Um, always test multiple creatives, always test at least one video, one carousel, one image, etc. Why? Because different audiences react to different um, visuals at different times of the day, at different you know, moments of their lives. Um, and also to avoid uh, what we call ad redundancy. There's nothing worse than when you see an ad being served to you over and over and over again. You fucking hate that. You're like, God damn it, stop. You know, same thing. Velocity is important. Um, and also because different audiences will write different to multiple formats. You know, I've seen video works better in one audience and then images works better in another. You know, well, yeah, turn me on. You say something? No, cool. Uh, where to place my ads? That's completely up to you. As I said, you can choose this. So you can choose whether being on Facebook, on audience network, Instagram Messenger, and weaving it. You can choose to be put just on the marketplace, just on the videos, uh, just on the right hand side, just on the timeline, just in this or that. My advice is not to touch it. Just do all the placement and let Facebook test it. The algorithm knows better than you. As simple as that, unless, unless you're like, oh my God, like I know for sure that this is here and blah, 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 maybe, but always, always, always like do all the placement for now. Like Facebook will like test it super quickly. And then the algorithm will know that it shouldn't go there because it doesn't usually work. And on the long run, you'll lose less money. Anyway, um, but once you do that, don't forget to optimize for each placement. So Facebook shows you all the placements. And you know, like for mobile, it needs to be square. For desktop, it's like a rectangle. For stories, it's a rectangle vertical. So just uh, you can do this directly. Well, you can do this directly on Facebook. Um, you, you you know you can do it directly on Facebook. Like modify the video, add a few things, or you just do it outside. There's a few tools that I can like recommend you, like Headliners or Vid.io does really does it really really well for you. Like just optimize the format, that's super important. A few rules on visuals. Uh, just, um, I think a year ago or like 10 months ago, yeah, you we weren't allowed to put any text into, or very little text, no more than 20% text into images, but that's not the case anymore. Facebook allows you to put text in images now. No nudity or sexual content, no before, after, like weight loss or whatever. Optimize for each placement. And the first three seconds of your videos, if you do one, are vital. This is when you're convincing someone to actually look at your ads. And once again, you test everything. You, you know, always test with like a traffic objective to see if people are actually catch up the day. The algorithm knows better than you. It actually does. And it's, um, it's quite scary sometimes. Although changes are coming with like the new privacy laws and the new, you know, privacy stuff with Apple or whatever, but so far, yes, pretty much. Um, use A-B test tool, no, A-B test everything, see what works. Um, avoid dynamic ads, dynamic ads, unless you know they're working and then use it. Dynamic ads. Um, the problem with that, uh, okay, dynamic ads is like when you create this one ad and um, you say to Facebook, here's four images, here's four text, here's four titles run them randomly and tell me which one works the best. I don't like this because I don't have control on the test. Uh, this is my personal take, but try it if you want, where you can just do it like each ad, each ad has a different 
text and images to it and you can choose differently, but up to you here. Structuring your campaigns, um, highly, highly recommend you to have like a name structure and think about your customer journey as a whole. Um, customer journey as a whole, well, you can see here, you know, like there is a test campaign. So cold plus warm in a test, like with an objective of traffic so that I know which ad brings the most traffic and people seem to be interacting the most. Cold video views, you know, it's just strategy. And then remarketing, that was with conversion, you know, uh, top of funnel, small set, et cetera. So be really, really clear about what you're testing, where your customers are at and exclude each other, you know, so you don't have too much problem. So you see here, SG is my name, because this is for a client. I have a test campaign and then cold audience remarketing, cold, uh, cold audience top of funnel, but with a specific thing, okay? And then I always make put what the um, uh, what the um, what the objective is. So traffic, video views, conversion, conversion. So I know I know from one look that what I'm looking at without thinking about oh my god what was this ad already. Uh, less is more. Uh, the pixel um, optimizes if you have less ads. So don't create one campaign per audience. If you're testing different audiences, one campaign. In this one campaign, you have 10 audiences, no problem. Put all your 10 audiences and you are like, I don't know, 50 uh, ads, no problem once again. But less campaign is better. Best practices, um, 50 conversion events per seven days, which means that if you put your campaign objective as purchase, um, you need for, for the pixel to be able to optimize, it means that you need to have 50 conversion per seven days. So ima imagine that you put 10, 10 euros per, I don't know, per week, for example, towards your ad, and then you want purchases, unless your, your average cost of purchase on Facebook is like, I don't know, one or two euros, uh, you won't have the 50, well, but even less than that, but like, whatever, I'm really bad at math, but you won't, you won't have enough money to actually go to just purchases. So, you know, so I guess if you have only $10 or 10 euros to spend per week, then maybe go for a traffic conversion, a uh, traffic objective instead of the conversion one. You know, you need to balance that out. Um, and if the pixel is not updating or is not like, um, yeah, uh, how do you call that in English? Um, isn't getting those 50 conversion events per week, then you're going to learning limited and Facebook will limit the delivery of your ad. So be really careful. Um, people don't do the same thing every day, test for a whole, for a whole week, you know. Um, if you start your ads on a Monday, wait until the next Monday to turn them off or make any big changes. Um, which period of year you're in? If you're launching your ads in Q4, which is all the way up to Christmas, good luck. Very, 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 very expensive to make ads, your cost will skyrocket. There's so many people trying to make ads that the bid, remember the bid is extremely high. So, you know, think about it. Like if you're in summer holidays, like for example, ads in middle of August in France for selling, well, I don't know, something like snowboards. No, you wouldn't do that, right? That, 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 that wouldn't work. So think about it, think about where you are, confinement, etc. You know, don't sell like, I don't know, picnic sets. Or maybe sell them out, maybe it will work, who knows, but in confinement. Um, always test that your pixel is well installed, landing card, card tools, etc. Um, and then once an ad is launched, um, once if if an ad is launched and you make any edits, big edits, so to the audience, to the creatives, the objective, the ads learning phase resets. So if something is working or if something is not working, duplicate. Oh, this is why you can see here, duplicate two, duplicate one, et cetera. Why? Because, um, because then you don't lose the, um, the ad set uh, learning phase and you, you keep on building on it. So if you make any changes, whatever, if you have, or to the contrary, if you have an ad set that works really well, do not touch it. <laughs> First rule of Facebook ads manager, if an ad works, you don't know why, but like you want to test different things or whatever, do not touch it, Dupli like duplicate it, do something on the side or whatever, but do not touch it because it works. It will stop working at some point, but if it works, don't touch it. Questions? 
All good? Cool, I'm gonna take some water and... How do you structure your budget? Um, really depending on the client, the type of product that I have, but, and you know, and the traffic side or whatever, I guess I always reserve about 10% to this budget to test, to testing new creatives, testing new audiences, testing new things. So if I have $1,000 and $100 per month, talking per month here, uh, will be reserved to testing. Um, I guess half of what's left, so let's just say 45, no, so 1,100, we have 900 left. So I'd say like half of that would be for um, prospecting even more, like I guess 15 and 60% for prospecting. And, and then some retargeting as well. And then I would do some like what I called, uh, what I call like side things. So, you know, to, to keep people in your mind. So for example, a video view campaign, like maybe 10% of that, just to like keep in people's mind or like a brand awareness or whatever. Really depends, and the rest on retargeting, depending once again on like how big your budget is. Any advice for high price product ads starting on 200 euros? Um, Antoine, it really, really depends the type of product that it is. But know that like the higher price tag it is, the more convincing you would have to do with your audience, and it's not like gonna be like a, a quick rise or a quick sell. So think more about in funnels longer funnels than just like get them to buy straight away because they won't usually depending depending what it is if it's like a coat like pieces of clothing is 200 euros that could work and then again you know this is longer acquisition funnel so be careful what's the minimum amount of money spent in web ads to bring people to your crowdfunding page personal turnover uh really depends but what i've seen in crowdfundings People that do their lead acquisition on Facebook, so to gain email addresses to then retarget for crowdfundings. Um, the best I found that I had was about $1, one euro per acquisition of email, like 50 cents, one euro, depending if you only ads or if you do like gamification and all that stuff. So 50 cents, one euro. And then of these people that you gather, they usually convert anywhere between 1% to 15% on the crowdfunding. So be really, really careful. I would say less people of higher quality is better than a lot of people of less quality. Think about like the depth of your data rather than the length. Um, do Pixel work with directing the audience to an app uh, or but instead of a website? Uh, well, the Pixel is just a tracking Thing. So Robert, I'm sure I understand your question, but I'm guessing is that like, can you still track people on an app? Depending on the app, depending if your app, if you're creating your own app or whatever, you put a pixel in it, and yes, you will be able to track them and see what they do, and then get that data back to the Facebook business um, to a certain point. But that depends on the app, really. Uh, do you recommend large audiences even for a conversion campaign? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean. It's different now with like the new privacy law changing. Before I would go for really, really large audiences with like a warmed pixel. Uh, but now I would reduce it a little bit more and give the algorithm a little bit less space to experiment than before. So I don't know, like 500,000, 1 million audience size for conversion campaign to start with. What's the minimum amount to spend per week to get good conversion results? That really depends on the price of your product. That really depends on the amount like, of money that you're ready to spend per customer. Like, I don't know, you can see some screenshots here and like we're having like 33 per purchase and 23 per purchase here. Like, so I don't know. It depends how many purchases you want, really. It's hard to say. Cool, no more questions, let's keep going. Okay, this is going to be a very quick one. Analyze and optimize your campaign. I have this little trick that works really well. Well, it's not mine. But first of all, you need to be able to read the data well. And you need to create like a really nice um, analysis table. And you can do that. First, check the breakdown. Um, so check uh, by delivery, by age, gender, age, and gender, business location, country, 
platform, platform and device placement, whether people seem to be converting more on iPhone than Android, whether people seem to be converting um, more, um, um, you know, like at 8 a.m. rather than 10 p.m. So you can adjust. You can like adjust by a lot of things. Check that. Because especially if you're going for a large conversion plan. So for example, your conversion campaign has 5 million people in it and it's converting, but you want to know who's converting because your age span is from 18 to 65 plus, And then you realize that 30, 40 people seems to people works best. Then you know that for the next campaign, you can actually put that in or not. Like, you know, but it gives you in, like data, precious data to optimize and on your visuals and your content, for example. Um, Anwar, can you suggest tools to optimize copy and content? Yes. Uh, headliner, no, what was it called? Uh, there's like a, a tool, I'll, I'll find the links for you, but there's a tool like in English only. Um, there's a whole bunch of tools, ask the public, which gives you all sorts of like, um, that you can find out what people are searching based on a certain topic on Google and whatever, which helps you to then create content for Facebook ads, could be interesting. Um, um, then there is a tool um, that helps you check if your headline is like clickable and like the clickability of your headline as well. Uh, there's a few different tools like that. And you can check Google Trends, obviously. Uh, but uh, yes, the test. To optimize your copy and content, it's really about testing, especially on Facebook. Cool. Um, review the data. So when you review the data and when you create your um, your ads, and when you create your ads um, on Facebook, I'd like to see the whole customer journey. When I say the whole customer journey, is like what's happened at each step, you know? So you can take a screenshot of this and I think the, the presentation, I'll send it to you after. So don't worry, like don't go like rushing. But the campaign name, the amount that I spent so far, so I know where I'm at in the budget, the reach, the amount of people that we reached, the frequency, the amount of time one person seen the ad, the CPM, the cost per 1,000 impression, very, very useful to see if Facebook is penalizing you or not. This is a, actually a little bit high, but then again, this was Christmas, so yeah. The CTR, the click-through rate, so the amount of people that clicked on your ad uh, in general, either to make it bigger so they can read what's written or to click to go on your website or whatever it is. Um, industry average is 1%, so 8% is actually really good. Also, there is like different click-through rates, so you know, outbound, inbound, open up, whatever. Landing page views, unique landing page views, the cost per landing page views, link clicks, unique link clicks. Why is it link clicks and unique? It's because also per person. So one person might click a few times to your ad. So it's good to know like how many exactly and the cost of the, link, of the click. Obviously, like this is a conversion campaign on the call audience. So the cost per link click is quite high. But if you go like for warm audience or if you go for um, like a traffic campaign, you, the, your cost per click should be about 10, 10 cents or 50 cents maximum. Content views, content views, add to cards. Unique up to cards, checkout initiated, uh, payments info, et cetera, et cetera. Because for example, if you see that you have a lot of people like viewing the content and it to cart, add the payment info, but then the total drop for, um, for purchases, then you know there is a problem with your purchases um, uh, system or flow, or whatever, maybe like the user isn't getting what they want or there's a problem. So you can troubleshoot, tr troubleshoot that. And you know, for example, if you know you have a, like a very low CTR, then you know your ad is crap or your audience isn't working. So change that. If you see that, for example, you have a lot of clicks through rate, a lot of clicks, but very few landing page views. Like for example, let's imagine you have like a hundred clicks to go to your website, so outbound clicks, and then you have only 27 landing page views, then you know there's a problem on your website that it's not loading or it's loading too slow or whatever. So check that, super important, et cetera, et cetera. Key data points to understand uh, that you need to understand on Facebook. The CPM, the cost per 1,000 impressions, the CTR, the number of clicks on an ad, the CPC, the cost per click, the CPA, your cost per acquisition, or CAC in French, um, and the CR, so the conversion rate, how many people are converting. 
um, optimizing your campaign, you always, always start from the end of the funnel and then you move, um, you move up. Why? It's because if, if your campaign is converting, if your campaign is converting at the price you want, who the hell cares if your CTR is bad, if your CPM is bad, if your cost per click is bad? Doesn't matter. I mean, you know, at the point, if you get what you want, you can like optimize it a little bit and that's fine. And like, you know, this is really getting to nitty gritty stuff, but this is what it's important to look at the first and then you go down. So are you converting? You know, if you're not converting, then check how, you know, the cost per link clicks, check, check your landing page, check your add to cart, check your initial checkout, check your purchase. If your success rate is below these numbers, you have an issue on your website on the pixel tracking or the, or like, you know, or this is not working. So, you know, 100% link clicks. If only 60% of them arrive on any page views, you have a problem. If only 5% of them add to cart, you have a problem. Of those 5%, if only, if less than 30% of them initiate checkout, you have a problem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is your CTR, so you're converting, but, um, but you know, it's not that great. So is your CTR good? If your CTR is not good, then maybe your audience is not performing well. Test more audiences. Um, maybe your credits are bad and people just don't stop to it because they're not like eye catching enough and don't speak to them enough. Um, maybe your frequency is too high as well. Like your frequency is like the amount of time a person sees your ad. If it's over five, do something, it's too much. You, you'll get people angry. Um, maybe your copy isn't convincing enough, as simple as that, just change the, the copy. Or maybe there's an audience and curative mismatch. Could be a lot of different issues, but test all of that, you have problems. Uh, you have a good CTR, you're converting, you have a good CTR on sales, things don't seem right. Um, maybe your CPM is too high. So if you have a high CPM, maybe your audience is too small and Facebook cannot optimize, the algorithm doesn't have enough space. Maybe your page is on the penalty. So, then just say that you have a really, really high frequency and, um, and people are reporting your ad and you had a lot of like customers, angry customers leaving a really bad review on your page, then Facebook will penalize you for that. Your constructor is too chaotic and the audience are overlapping, like then Facebook will penalize for that as well. But also CPM is a good indicator of competition and whether Facebook favors you or not. Remember when you put an ad, you put a bid meaning that your landing page is bad or whatever, 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 then something is wrong and the CPM will reflect that. The CPM is an important indicator. And um, yeah, I said everything. And that's it for me for today. Oh my God, finished on time. Yes, <laughs> I'm proud of myself.